we're going to talk tonight about how to lay hold of your healing. This is a huge thing, how to lay hold of what God has given you regarding physical healing. Now, you could take these principles, you could say it's how to lay hold of anything that God has given you by his grace, because all the principles work the same way. But in relation to healing, there's some things that you got to know, and there's some, there's some things that the enemy will do that the word of God exposes so that you can lay hold of things. We make it way, way too difficult, right? In our modern day church, we make it too difficult. You know, in, 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 when you preach the word of God and you're all about the word, you get people that are just, okay, how exactly do I confess this? Because I've got to do it just perfectly. No, 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 it's not about that, right? This is, this is easy. It's easy. So we want to talk about how to lay hold. So turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10, verse 1, and we'll launch off into this. You guys okay? Ready? Amen? Big hunger. God wants you well. He wants you healed. He wants you prosperous. He wants you increasing. He wants your marriages flourishing. He wants your families flourishing. He wants your children to never know lack. He wants you to never know lack, despite what the economy may be doing doesn't matter. We live in the kingdom. And there is no lack in the kingdom, right? There's healing in the kingdom. Think of it this way. Everything that God did for us, everything, he did it and gave it to us by grace. And we lay hold of it through faith. Amen? So we're going to talk about how to lay hold tonight. Luke chapter 10, verse 1 says this. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, sent them two and two before his face in every city and place where he himself would come. And it says, he told them in verse 9, he goes, heal the sick that are there and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come near unto you. Lay hands on them, or, or did, he didn't say that. He said, heal the sick, but he also said that are there, but then also say something to them. When you are ministering to the sick, and we know Jesus laid hands, laying hands on people was a big way, right? But however it was, he said, you go heal the sick. He gave them delegated authority to do that, but he said, I want you to say unto them, the kingdom of God is come near unto you. In other words, healing is part of the kingdom of God, right? Healing is actually a sign that the kingdom has come. So the primary way, if you look at Jesus and do an aerial view of his ministry, the primary way that people were healed in his ministry was that they received their healing, how? Through faith. If you look at the 19 individual cases of healing in the ministry of Jesus, and it seems like there's a lot more because, you know, three of the Gospels will tell the same story, just different parts and different ways. But these 19 individual cases, you know, the women with the issue of blood, the nobleman's son, Jairus' daughter, the leper, you know, the blind Bartimaeus, all those, the majority of those received healing. It, it, it said it like this, for he saw their faith, or woman, your faith has made you whole. Their faith was the determining factor in, in literally now... In almost every one of them, it's either spoken or it's you can see the person's faith. Only two out of the 19 were their gifts of healing just and a working of a miracle that was involved. So that's a real interesting thing in the ministry of Jesus. In Luke chapter 17, in verse 20 and 21, it says this, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, 
he answered them and he said, and this is going to give us some insight on the kingdom. He answered them and said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation, with observation. That means without an outward show. It doesn't come with an outward show, he's saying. Verse 21, neither shall they say lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Interesting. The kingdom of God, which if you look at it, every time the kingdom's mentioned, healing takes place in the ministry of Jesus in the early church. I mean, it's all over. Healing is part of the kingdom, but the kingdom of God, which includes healing, through the redemptive work of Jesus, he's saying this, will be within you. In other words, healing is from within. And this is a big thing that people don't get because they think it's something coming from the outside in, but it's from within. Okay, so keep that in mind. For you as a believer, healing is from within. Turn to Romans chapter 8 because I want you to see this. Romans chapter 8, we're going to look at verse 10, but then I really want you to see verse 11. Verse 11, we're talking about laying hold of your healing. Romans 8.10 says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Look at this, though. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, so how many of you is the Holy Spirit right now in you. If you're born again, Hello. that's you. Hello. Right? Okay, so if that's you, if you've accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Look at what he's doing. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwells in you. Quicken. That Greek word means to make alive, to restore to health, and to heal. It says if the Holy Spirit's on the inside, it's telling you what he wants to do. He wants to quicken you. I wonder what it would do to your physical body if you walked around saying, Father, I thank you that right now the Holy Spirit is quickening my mortal body. He's restoring my mortal body to health. He's healing it, right? Didn't Proverbs chapter four, it says the word of God would be life to all those that find it and health or medicine to all their flesh. Well, it talks about the word being in the midst of your heart. Healing is from within, okay? So keep that in mind. Why do we say that? Well, let me just say this, this word quicken, right? To be quickened, from sickness and disease, what does that mean? It means to be healed, right? But the reason why we're talking about this is most believers are looking for healing to come from the outside. And when you do that, it causes you to always be fighting your flesh. You're always fighting your flesh. Why? Because you're always looking at your flesh to see if healing has come. And boy, Satan loves that, right? Because you're not to look at your flesh to tell you if you're healed. You are look, to look one place. And Satan knows that. Satan wants to get you looking at circumstances. He wants you to, get, he wants you to look at everything except fixing your eyes on Jesus, who is Jesus, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. See, people, if you're, looking, if you're looking for healing coming from the outside, now you're looking that you're fighting your body. Is it healed? What, am I doing good? Is it, am I better today? If I don't feel as good today, does that mean I'm not healing? Does not healed, does it mean healing hasn't come? This will lead you down a road to think that the war 
is between them and their flesh. So, so just hang with me with this for a minute. Ephesians 6, 12, what does that tell us? We don't wrestle, right? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. You don't wrestle against your own body to obtain healing. I know that seems like such a little thing, and sometimes you could sit here and go, well, that, no, I don't do that. But are you, are you thinking about your body all day long? Are you looking at it? And, and now with our society, man, you can go to Walgreens and stuff and you can measure blood sugar and blood pressure. And, you know, you've got Apple watches that will tell you almost what you're thinking. You know, I mean, I, 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 I don't wear this very often. I, I do not want my watch to tell me to breathe, stand up, shut up, right? No, 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 you're not telling me what to do. But you know, you could measure everything, and wow, that sounds so good, because I could real, really dial it in, but what happens is to lay hold of healing, you have to become fully persuaded that the word is true, and the only way to do that is to never stop looking at the word. Right? See, this is why we're talking about this. You don't wrestle against your own body to obtain healing. This never works because you're going to start judging your faith. You're going to start judging to see if your faith is working by looking at the symptoms or what the doctor is telling you. And all of a sudden, it'll become all about your faith. And then Satan will sit on your shoulder and say, well, if you just had enough faith, yep, that's exactly you know, and man, you kicked the dog this morning and you did this and you, you don't qualify for this. Come on, man. And because you're looking at your body and you're judging your faith by what your body's talking to you about. When he says that, you don't say, shut up. Colossians says, it is written, I've been made worthy by Jesus. And you make it all about your faith and your life and you instead of about Jesus. We recognize that the healing power of God, which is the Holy Spirit, dwells in us. Right? We must accept that physical healing comes from a spiritual source. This is real big. Sickness and disease, it has a spiritual origin. Sickness and disease is just not the presence of some germ or some bacteria or some virus. Sickness and disease is not just the presence of that, right? The spiritual source of sickness and disease is spiritual death. That's the source of it. We have to get this right. Because otherwise we're fighting a natural battle. We think we're fighting a spiritual battle, but we're fighting a spiritual battle naturally. Sickness and disease had no way into this world system until Adam and Eve fell. Sickness and disease is a byproduct of spiritual death. Right? So let's keep, let's, now, now we got to talk about this, and I know in our groups, maybe this is not that big of a deal, but this needs to be on, in this message for those people that are going to hear this. What we are not talking about tonight is spiritual healing. We're not talking about spiritual healing. If you could ever figure out what that is, I would love to know, because that just, that's ridiculous. Most which talk about spiritual healing are actually talking about their emotions. The healing of your emotions, if you want to know about that, 
Um, I know a good series that we've just been spending nine weeks on, right? Talking about all kinds of stuff. The healing of your emotions only comes through the renewing of your mind with the word of God. But this is what we have. See, this is where people are at, though. Pastor, I need to be healed of my past hurts. Is that real? Absolutely real. But is that the healing we're talking about? No. No, we're not talking about... That's, see, what is this? I need to be healed of my past hurts. No, what you need is to renew your mind with the Word of God so that the word will literally pull that stuff out and and untwist your emotions. And literally, those hurts that are so real in your mind, the word of God can literally pull them out to where there's no scar anymore. You might have this mental recollection that that happened to you, but you can't even touch what it felt like anymore. That's not spiritual healing. That's the renewing of the mind. If you renew your mind with God's word, you will think God's thoughts and learn his ways. As you put God's ways into practice in your life, it will bring the blessing of the Lord into your life and it'll bring wholeness to your soul, right? This is how past emotional hurts are healed. Boy, you got to hear me with this. This is so big. Doesn't matter what has happened to you, that's how it's healed. The implanted word is able to bring healing, wholeness, and salvation to your souls. Renewing your mind with God's word, it means that you accept God's word to be true, and then you walk that out by being a doer of God's word. And that's how you renew your mind with the word. And it's a lifelong process. So let's jump back into this. Physical healing has a spiritual source. The spiritual source of God's healing power is what? It is the finished work of Christ. Right? He sent his word and healed them. Jesus himself bore our sickness and carried our pain. Surely he's borne my sickness and carried my pain. We did esteem him smitten, stricken of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, or really with his stripe, I am healed. John 10.10, I call this the dividing line in the Bible. We have to know this. The thief comes but for to steal and but for to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life. That's why in Psalm 145 verse 8 it says, the Lord is gracious. He is full of compassion. Man, if so, so if, if you, if I got to use two water bottles tonight. Oh my goodness. So he's full of compassion. So this bottle's not full, is it? So that means something else could be in that bottle, couldn't it? For those of you here for the first time, this is really deep. So, so but if I fill this bottle with water, so if it's full of water, can it be filled with anything else? No. So the Bible says that God is full of compassion. Do you know the word compassion and the word mercy in the Bible, you could use them interchangeably. Healing actually is a mercy. It says things like Jesus had compassion on them and healed all their sick. The God of heaven is full of compassion. Right? He's slow to anger and of great mercy. The Bible says he is good to all and his tender mercies are over all of his works. 
Psalm 107.20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of your iniquities and who heals all of your diseases. Right? 1 Peter 2.24, Who, his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes You were healed, past tense. When were you healed? You could be sitting here with symptoms in your body tonight. When does the Bible say you were healed? When he hung on the cross. Why? Because there's a spiritual source to all sickness and disease. So it's not a matter of God healing you. It's a matter of you literally receiving it. Right? That Greek word healed, by whose stripes you were healed, it's aeomai. It's the Greek word aeomai. It literally means to cure, to heal, and to make whole physically. So many Christians are trying to fight. Think about when you've been believing God for a healing. If you don't keep your eyes single focused on the word of God and stay at rest and let the word do the work, you will start fighting sickness in your own body. I just got to fight this. No, you don't. Jesus already did. This never works because, again, you're going to start judging your faith to see if it's working by looking at your body or looking at what you've been told or a diagnosis to see if it's getting better. Right? You are not fighting flesh and blood. You're not fighting against your own flesh. Remember that. The Holy Spirit, that he'll quicken your mortal body. Right? He'll restore it to health. So let's look at a story that really kind of gives us a great picture of how to lay hold of healing. So let's go to Romans chapter 4. Let's look, start in verse 17. Let's look at Abraham. You guys doing okay? Praise God. God appeared to Abraham at age 75 and told him to leave his father's house. Abraham was the firstborn. He had an inheritance coming. God was saying, I want you to get out of this system of provision and I want you to go where I tell you to go. But then then we see God appears to Abraham at 99 years old, 24 years later. Abraham had given up on the promise, was not in faith. Abraham's 99 years old, so now it is an impossible situation. Abraham's body is dead, Sarah's womb is dead. God waits until it's an impossible situation. At 99 years old, it can only be God that can cause Abraham and Sarah to have a child. Right? Why is this in the Bible? Do not be conquered by impossible situations. Because it's not impossible. He is the God of the impossible. Right? Something takes place within that year that enables them, Abraham and Sarah, to receive the miracle birth of Isaac. Something happens in one year. So let's look at it. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. It says, as it is written, and now Paul, writing to the Romans, is quoting Genesis 17, 5. As it is written... I have made thee a father of many nations. Think about this. God told Abraham before Isaac was born, I've already made you a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead. And then it says this, and calls those things which be not as though they were. This is the language of God. It's the language of faith calling those things which be not 
as though they were. So if you and I are to walk or live by faith, we have to speak the language of faith. So you and your life should be calling those things which be not as though they were. Right? Notice God calls those things that be not as though they were. He doesn't call those things that are as though they're not. That's not faith. So if you wake up with a major sinus infection, you don't run around saying, right? If Mike comes up and says, Pastor, are you doing okay? Do you have a sinus infection? No, I don't. That's calling something that is as though it's not. You know what that is? That's a lie. That's not the language of faith. But if Mike goes, hey, pastor, do you have a sinus infection? And I look at Mike and I said, you know what, Mike? It is written, by his stripes, I am healed. So I walk around saying I'm healed. I, be- I declare in the name of Jesus that I'm healing. Healed. The healing power of God is driving out this sinus infection. I don't deny that I have one. I deny its right to remain in my body. Does that make sense? Verse 18, who against hope believed in hope. What does that mean? So Abraham, who had no natural hope that he and Sarah could have a child. No natural hope. I mean, if you're a guy and you're 99 years old, you're going to know that you're not going to be able to have a child. Right? If you're a lady and you're 90 years old, and you couldn't have a child when you were a young girl, and you never had a child your whole life, by the time you're 90, you will know the womb is dead. There's, it, there's no possible way. Right? But who against hope, who against natural hope, they chose to believe what God said anyway. That's what this means. Who against hope believed in hope. Who against natural hope they chose. They said, okay, in the natural, there's no way it could happen, but God said. God said that our seed would be blessed, that we would have a child, that, that right? That if we could count the stars, we could count our seed. So that's what this is saying. So keep going. Verse 19, and being not weak in faith. Well, what are you if you're not weak in faith? You're strong in faith. And being not weak in faith, the King James Version is a little vague because it says he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. In the New American Standard Version, it brings out the Greek very clearly. It says this, without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated, which means he considered his own body, now as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old in the deadness of Sarah's womb. In other words, it was not a weakness in faith for Abraham to consider the circumstances naturally, the weakness of the flesh naturally. Some believers, it's like they get into this denial game. Faith, doesn't de- faith is not denial, it denies the right. So this is saying he was able to look at his body and go, it's dead. Sarah's womb is dead without becoming weak in faith. But, here's the thing, he didn't didn't stand and stare at it and compare it. Well, do you think, Sarah, do you feel better today? You know? Do you you think that maybe, I mean, I, I feel a little bit better today. Maybe this is really working. No, it wasn't about that, right? Abraham is not denying, in other words, that his body and Sarah's body was now dead 
and not able to have children in the natural. Faith doesn't deny the circumstances or the conditions. Abraham, without being weak in faith, considered his body dead, considered Sarah's womb dead. In other words, what I got, I got to get you to see is Abraham was not looking. He was not looking at his body and he was not looking at Sarah's body to tell him whether or not they were going to have a child. Just like you are not to look at your body to tell you whether or not your faith is working and you're healed or not. This is, this is so gigantic if you can get this. Abraham did not judge the truth of God's word. He didn't judge what God promised him by what was going on in his body or what was going on in his wife's body. In the same way, don't judge, don't you judge what God has said in his word based on what your circumstance is. Does that make sense? This is what this is telling us very, very clearly. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. This, mean, this word staggered mean he didn't oppose and he didn't differ or contend with the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. How was he strong in faith? By giving glory to God. That's why worship is so important. Father, I thank you. I mean, when you're, when you're believing God for healing... What we, we saw this Sunday when we talked about how God wants to prosper you. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Let them who are believing God for healing say continually, it is written, by his stripes I am healed. It is written, he sent his word and healed me. It is written, I, I, Christ himself redeemed me from the curse of the law which includes all sickness and all disease. I, you get strong in faith, giving glory to God, if you sit there and start contemplating what has happened to you or what is going on with you. Your body's not working right. Man, the enemy will jump there and he will help you. And he'll get your eyes off Jesus. And all of a sudden, you won't know what's going on. Come on right? right? In the New American Standard Version, again, it says... Yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver. Notice with respect. He bre this brings out the Greek so clearly. Abraham respected what God said so much. Yet with respect to the promise of God, he didn't waver in unbelief, but he grew strong. And this is what I love about the New American Standard. It, it says it the way it is. He grew strong. It's a progressive. He grew strong in faith as he gave glory to God. You grow strong in faith. Right. Becoming fully persuaded is a process. See, people are looking for a feeling. They just think something's going to just all of a sudden just go off and then it's going to be great. See, this is huge. Abraham, again, he did not allow his body to tell him or to convince him whether or not God's word is true. In other words, Abraham had a spiritual source to overcome the condition in his body. What was that spiritual source? It was the word of God, the promise that God had spoken to him, and the mighty Holy Spirit. You have promises from God and the mighty Holy Spirit. You have a spiritual source in your life to overcome any condition in your body, any condition in your finances, any condition in your family. You have a spiritual source that is much greater than what the enemy has. So this is how healing works. He grew strong in faith, looking to the promise of God. That's how he grew strong in faith. 
looking to the promise of God kept him from being swayed by his body. So here's the question for all of us. Will you respect the facts in your body, in your finances, in your life, or are you going to respect the truth of God's word? That is the question, right? Abraham grew strong in faith, looking to God's promise. See, this is why God uses this story to define and give us, to reveal to us how faith works. God wants you to lay hold. So many Christians watch hours and hours of Christian TV. They listen to, well, let me date myself. They listen to MP3 after MP3, message after message of all this stuff, and they never lay hold. We've got to meditate in Scripture. That's right. We've We've got to take what the Holy Spirit tells us to meditate in and just literally say it over and over and keep my eyes on it. And I'm not going to look, I'm not going to be swayed by what's going on. This is huge. Look at verse 21 now. And being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised him, he was able also to perform. Wow. See, he didn't judge the truth of what God told him by what was going on in his body or Sarah's body. I love that. Renewing your mind with God's word. It means you accept his word to be true, like I said before, right? And then you become a doer of it. You walk it out. The more you give glory to God, the more you keep your eyes on the promise, the more that it will cause you to grow to be fully persuaded. See, so this is what happens to a believer. They, they hear this and they're like, okay, I got it. Come on. And then they, they start doing it and they start walking, right? Remember, you've, said, you've heard me say this. You meditate in the word The Holy Spirit brings revelation of who God is, revelation from the word of God, and you progress. And you keep meditating in the word. You keep giving glory to God. You keep your eyes on the promise. And then he reveals something else, and you become more fully persuaded. And you progress. And you progress. But what happens is life. You start... You start getting really busy and things start happening and then circumstances happen that are like, wait a minute, I was believing God and this thing just got really bad. And then something else blows up in your life and what happens is now you kind of are going like this. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Then you come back to church on a Wednesday night and, and you lock yourself in again. But I'm here to tell you the Holy Spirit will keep you locked in. He'll keep you locked in out there. He'll keep you locked in tonight when you lay down in your bed and the enemy tells you, listen, that pastor prayed that that God would give you a good night's sleep, but watch, you're not going to sleep good tonight. And that's where you have, who's, so you have God's witness, I give my beloved sleep, you have the enemy saying, no, you're not going to have a good night's sleep. You already know, your mind's racing, you're this, you're that, right? Whatever it is, you're the third witness, What are you going to say? I'm going to keep my eyes, and as I lay there in my bed, Father, I thank you you give your beloved sleep. I thank you that you give. And and everything within you wants to look at your watch to see how long it's been. Man, I'm telling you, you're stronger on the inside than you could even imagine you are. You are strong in him. Do you realize that whatever God has called you to do in this earth, don't you look at the world, what's been done, and decide, no, 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 no. God wants to take you to a higher level. The fight of faith is to become fully persuaded that what God said is truth. And truth will change every fact and all the nonsense. This is a day-by-day process. Actually, you could probably even say 
It's a minute by minute process. It's like if you want to lose weight, it's not a day by day decision. It is a moment by moment decision. If you want to get in shape, if you want to be a good parent, it becomes a moment by moment decision. It becomes, if you want to be a good husband or a good wife, if, if I want to be a, a, a qualified minister that pleases the Lord, it, it, everything is progressive. I must keep my eyes on Jesus. I cannot start looking at natural stuff because it'll start limiting everything. It's a day-by-day process of renewing your mind to the promise. I'm thoroughly convinced that why people who know the word of God, they have a mental ascent understanding. They could even quote scripture. But the reason why they're not laying hold of anything is because if it doesn't just work right away, they let go of it because it's like they start looking at other stuff. But if you'll start, I mean, I'm telling you, if you will keep your eyes on the word, And you just keep giving him glory. You keep thanking him. You keep speaking the word of God. All of a sudden, man, you will start walking in a different realm. You'll get out of the flesh and you'll actually be walking in the spirit. Satan works to get you to look at your body so that you keep keep to keep you from becoming fully persuaded. People will let their body literally bring them back into unbelief. Abraham realized this. His body was not the problem. What are you talking about? This dude's 99 years old. He's dead. But his body was not the problem. The problem was, is he going to keep his eyes on the Lord? Or is he going to is he going to look at other things? That's the problem. Not his body. You have cancer in your body, cancer in your body is not the problem. You've already been given healing. The problem is if you start letting natural circumstances get your attention instead of God's word. Do you see that? This is huge. Abraham looked at the promise of God to keep him from wavering while he gave glory to God for what he didn't see. Let me say that again. Abraham looked to the promise of God to keep him from wavering while he gave glory to God for what he couldn't see yet. Father, I thank you that you've made me a father of many nations. He keeps saying, thank you for my son. He's meditating on what God said. He's renewing his mind to God's promises. The more he does this, the more fully persuaded he becomes. Here's a big one, guys. What about about the call of God for your life? Have you ever been distracted by that? Have you ever looked at your circumstances? And your circumstances might be telling you, I'm blowing it. I'm not walking out the call of God for my life. And if you keep looking at it, guess what? You'll you'll miss the call of God for your life. But if you'll keep your eyes on the promise, Jesus, I'm so thankful that you're not just the initiator of my faith. You are the completer. You are with long life, I'm going to satisfy him and show him my salvation. I will finish my course. Right? This is huge. The Holy Spirit quickens your body as you focus on God's word instead of your circumstances. Again, when you realize and when I realize that the fight is not against my flesh, the fight is to become fully persuaded to what God said he would perform. That's the fight. Always put all the pressure on the word. Don't put pressure on your body to change. So there's two elements of growing strong in faith. 
giving glory to God and becoming fully persuaded. This is where the fight is. The fight is not in our flesh. You don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Satan, Satan's your enemy. And he's not, he's just, he's putting, he's putting pressure for the word's sake. Because if he separates you from the word, you're done. You can't receive anything. Right? Abraham looks at the promise of God again to keep him from wavering while he's giving glory to God for what he can't see. Hallelujah. The battle of the believer is to become fully persuaded that God's promise of healing is ultimate truth, not subject to change ever. Notice God talks to Abraham. Notice how he talks to him. Do you know God talks to him in past tense? Verse 17, he didn't have a son, and he says, I've made you a father of many nations. Isn't that interesting? Because to God, it's already done. Do you know to God, everything you need is already done? This means as far as God is concerned, it is settled. Wow. What does 1 Peter 2.24 say? Again, we read it earlier. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Hmm. When, when was the tree? That was, that was a long time ago, right? About AD 30, AD 32. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. Nope, you're right. Pastor Elisa, we're healed. Past tense. God speaks to us in past tense regarding our own healing. Boy, Satan doesn't want you to know that. In Abraham's case, it means that God has done everything needed for Abraham to be the father of many nations. God had already done everything. Why? What did he do? He spoke it. Becoming fully persuaded, guys, is a, it's, it's a day-by-day process. It's a moment-by-moment. Moment. It's leaving this place, making a decision that, you know what? I mean, as, if I went around this room, I, I, bet, I bet this whole room is filled with people that would say, you know what? I know. I know that God is not a liar. I know that this word is true. I might not understand why some stuff has happened, but I could tell you this, his word is true. Amen. And so if I don't understand something, it doesn't mean his word's not true. Right. It is true. Right. He can't lie. Yep. Come on. Nowhere does it say that because Abraham believed God, that some special woo-woo power came on him and Sarah, zapped their body, and they were able to have a son. It doesn't say that anywhere. And it doesn't say that Abraham's faith made God move. What? You should see some of the looks on your face right now. Our faith doesn't make God move to bring healing. Why, why doesn't... Wait a minute, Pastor. Are you telling me that my faith does not move God to bring my healing? Nope. Why? Because he already brought your healing. It's already yours. You are a born-again Christian. When you got saved, you, I, I was four and a half. I couldn't spell righteousness. I couldn't spell righteous. But at this little four-and-a-half-year-old little boy that a demon was messing with, I didn't find that out till years later by a discerning of spirits, but at four-and-a-half years old, I had already been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. I was blessed with every spiritual blessing, all of them. Does that mean there's any left? Nope. When I got born again at four and a half years old, I was literally given everything, and the whole plan of God for my whole life, for all eternity, was placed in me. And it was done. Is that amazing? I didn't even know it, but I had everything. My future's not in front of me. My future's within me. That's why, that's why Luke 10, 19 says, listen, I have given you delegated authority 
We know this in the name of Jesus to have absolute mastery. I'm talking about the Greek words. Over the whole satanic hierarchy, over all the ability of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me. I need, to, I need to learn how to walk in that so that I can lay hold of everything that God's given me. Instead of wondering, why in the world? Why did this happen to me? Why did God allow this? He has to allow what we allow. Yeah, but I would not have wanted to allow that. Okay. Listen, you live on the earth. There is a thief that comes to steal and kill and destroy. So if, if, you, if, you, if you suffered some things here, don't lose it. Just jump back in and go, okay, he's never going to steal from me again. I'm going to keep my eyes on the word. I'm going to stay fully persuaded, and I'm just going to keep... I'm going to keep my eye on his word. I'm going to keep giving him glory for what I can't see. And I'm telling you, God's word is true. He'll change everything. And all that the enemy stole from you, he has to bring it back. That's Bible. How, pastor? I don't know. You can ask God. Most likely he won't tell you because he doesn't. He, he's... He's the God of the how. Your job is to believe it and act on it. His job is to bring it to pass. The Bible is very clear with Abraham. It's, it says he received the promise because his focus was on what God said. God's word is that spiritual source. Man. See, Satan gets us to look at our body to keep us from being fully persuaded. Most look and say, God's word says I'm healed, but my body says, why am I hurting? People let their body again sway them or bring them into unbelief. But the Holy Spirit, is, he's able to quicken your body as you focus on God's word instead of the circumstances. You must get rid of, but my body. You must get rid of, but the doctor said. You got to get rid of that. Now, we love doctors. We're so thankful for them. But I don't look to a doctor to heal me. A do there's no doctor on the planet that could heal you of anything. Right? No, no, you can go in for surgery, and a doctor can cut you open move some stuff around, take some stuff out, put some new stuff in, fix some stuff. But once you're done, you still got to heal. Satan will come with the but to get your eyes on the circumstances, but you need to respond, but it is written. The more you give God glory, the more you keep your eyes on the promise, how many times is pastor going to say this? The more it will cause you to grow and be fully persuaded. You literally tap into the power of God. And guys, I can't even put words to that. You, you literally, as you do this, you will tap into the power of God by giving glory to him. And it will cause you to become fully persuaded. Hallelujah. God did not put gifts of healings, workings of miracles, special healings, anointings in the church for the body of Christ to heal itself. That's not God's first way of doing it. These things are supposed to be a sign to the world to bring them into the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got to get away from thinking we need somebody. We already got him. We have the Holy Spirit of God in us who will quicken our mortal bodies. And, and God says this in his word. It's in the commanded tense over and over. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, 11, The just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17. Again, the just shall 
shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. These scriptures show us that this faith that I'm talking about is to be our lifestyle. We're not to have faith events. We're to have a lifestyle of faith. It didn't, notice, it never said the just shall use their faith. It said the just shall live by faith. You know, go back to, when I came into, for when I first heard faith in like 1980, and then, man, in the 80s and then the 90s, by, by the 90s, you had people walking around with their chest out, going, look at that car. My faith got that car. Man, you need to be slapped. That makes me wish God didn't give you the air to say that. Because what an abomination. It's his faith. It comes by his word. He gave it to you by his grace. But because we get into my faith and this and that, what happens, we get tripped up because then it all becomes about us. Man, I'm here to tell you today, my lifestyle of faith is all about him. My part is to rest. I'm going to cease from my own works and I'm going to let his word do the work. Right? Hallelujah. Boy, I could keep going. Man. It says in Romans 10.10, 10, let me just, let me close this thing down here. Try to. It says in Romans 10.10, 10, for with the heart, your spirit, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. See, it's your confession that will reach through the veil. Your confession of faith reaches through the veil of this unseen and it lays hold of the unseen promise of God and it brings it back in this realm. So many Christians that hear the word and hear the word and hear the word and listen to the word, but they never meditate on the word, they become, they walk in victory in theory and they feel real good. Oh, that's my answer. And they'll get together with you and they could talk, they could quote all the scriptures. This sermon, they could finish every scripture. But, they, but God wants you to walk in victory, right? In reality, experiencing his victory. That's your witness. The place of rest is the confession of your mouth that reaches through the veil. The place of rest is is also physical activity you do that is motivated by the faith of your heart. It's not motivated by you just wanting to do something. I work out my own salvation. Why? Because it's him that works in me. In other words, I work out only what he's working in. You know you are at rest when you are in the place that you are fully persuaded that God's word is true. See, it's in this place, you're at rest, and you're no longer moved by your senses anymore. You're not denying what might be going on in your body or your life, but you know what God said about it. You know his word is true, and you are fully persuaded that he will perform what he said. What you are holding on to through this veil is not the thing of healing, prosperity. You know what you, when you reach through the veil, when you speak words of faith, you reach through this veil. You know what you grab hold of? You're not grabbing hold of healing of cancer. You're not grabbing hold of healing of arthritis or diabetes. You're not grabbing hold of the finances you need. What you're grabbing hold of is Jesus. Because in him is everything. Ask the Lord to just show you things, to make what you've heard yours. And he'll bring other scriptures to your, to your spirit and, and he'll help you lay hold and walk in a revelation. But if you leave here with nothing else, it's all about you keep your eyes on the word. 
You put all the pressure on the word. You let the word do the work. And as you do that over time, you walk in the word of God. You, you quote it, you speak it, and you give him glory, and you will grow. You might not start out fully persuaded, but you will grow to be fully persuaded. And I, it'll be fun to watch it because when you'll be fully persuaded, what'll happen is you'll leave church tonight and you'll be like, oh, pastor, that was a great message. And you'll leave church. And then Sunday, you'll come and like tackle me and go, oh my gosh, right? Saturday afternoon at three o'clock, I was, I, was I was washing a dish and it hit me. Pastor, I am healed. Is that incredible or what? That's the way it works, guys. Things that have been messing with you for decades, hurts, abuse, all this stuff, it will literally, when it gets pulled out, you just go, because you've tapped into a power that's not you. Don't try to do this on your own. Amen?